you walk up a well-trotted path and find yourself enveloped with the sounds of water rushing and you gaze upon a watermill. A smile finds home on your face. You have finally made it to civilization. Hey there, it's a new year. It's the same old me. If you're new here, hi, I'm Zane Morgan and welcome to Zane Morgan Crafts. I'm gonna show you how I built my water mill. So stay tuned, sit back, relax. And if you wanna build this, all the STLs that I created and used in this build are available via my Patreon. And I hope you like it. This project brought to you by Styroder. This is the Mother's Milk of XBS foam. And honestly, this foam was a Christmas gift from the crazy crafter himself, which was sent to him all the way from Belgium. So I really wanted to do the foam justice and incorporate it into a really cool project. And to do that, what did I make? I made a shit ton of bricks. Now this piece that I'm working on currently is technically the ground floor, but there is going to be a basement level of this build. Think of it as like a split level piece. That being said, I used wood beams to separate the gaps and to create a nice seam between the floors. So once the beams were placed down with some hot glue, I then just had fun with adding some various shapes and textures of different size bricks. Now for the door for this build, I just repurposed the SDL that I had created for the haunted cabin build back in my Scary Stories project. I painted it up with colors that I'll show you in a bit. Um, pretty much every wooden piece in this build is painted in the same color scheme. So I'll go in a little more detail of that later. Now it's time for the black Mod Podge. Like I said, I'll go over paint schemes a little bit later because the base of this project, all the materials are about the same. Now, like I said, with the door, uh, the stones, the same thing. So any of the stones used in this build, I assume they're from the same area. So therefore it's the same color scheme. So I'll go over that in a little bit. Next, it was time to make a base for the upper floor, and I knew it was gonna overhang, so the bottom was going to be exposed. I used foam core for the middle section, and then the wooden beams that would be seen were then textured with a wire brush, and those were made out of styrator. When that was done, it was time to start making the plaster walls. For this, I used a dull pencil to texture, adopting a technique from Shifting Lands. Next, it was time to figure out the spacing of the front cornices and windows. And for this, I used a ruler. When that was done, I cut out holes for the windows and then glued everything down. And I used rectangular SBS scraps as supports for the corners. And for the plaster, I didn't wanna use black paint and Mod Podge. So I just mixed a small batch of what I'm gonna call the lighter Mod Podge using yellow okra paint and French vanilla. And while that dried, I attached the wooden floor it would sit on, and that was based in black, and then dry brush with real brown, coffee latte, and then an extra light dry brush of French vanilla on top. I use this recipe on every single wooden piece in the build. So if you see me painting wood, it is this recipe. Super simple, and I think doing the dry brush, especially with a chunky brush, really adds some texture and dimensionality to the build. I always said that the next time I would do a Tudor style build, I would paint the plaster first and then glue down the board to make my life easier. <laughs> and I did it. I'm so happy with myself. Now the next step was just about creating a cool looking design with the boards and plaster to make it really come together. The overcrop portion I decided was going to be a wooden wall, so here I just created that out of foam, scrap, and glued it on. Now the roof line of this piece was going to be a bit on the fantasy side, so I just cut out some odd shaped triangles and painted them with the light Mod Podge and then hot glued them onto the walls where the wooden boards would hide the seams.
and I decided that this small decorative window piece would be hard to make nicely out of foam, so I just designed it up in Blender and printed it out. And honestly, this is like one of my favorite parts of this build. I think it was a nice addition. Really, all the SDLs that I created for this project, they're a lot more detailed than my past projects, so I'm really thrilled about that. After gluing that on, I made a chimney out of leftover bricks and I just stacked them up and made them look a little bit whimsical. Harry Potter architecture was kind of my uh, inspiration here. Next up was the base that this project was going to sit on. Originally it was going to be a standalone building, but I remembered that I had a moving water wheel that I wanted to incorporate into this. So I needed that to be supported, and so it kind of became like a mini terrain board. I used my normal process for this of layering scrap foam and cutting out shapes with a hot wire, making sure to cut a square that would fit the basement of the mill. After creating a bridge piece out of cardboard and more bricks, I went in with some wall spackle to fill the gaps, and as that dried, I built up the exterior walls with more stone. You know, hate on hot glue all you want, but it makes my life easier, so hot glue for life. When the spackle dried completely, I then black mod podged the remaining stone in the entire base of the project. To create variation in the stone, I used burnt sienna on the random bricks, and then started with a base dry brush of medium gray, dove gray, and then linen. I then wanted to give the illusion of a used path, so I used some brown to add some grime to the stone and create like a walkway along the bridge. I almost always do this when creating projects. I love adding a dry brush of alfalfa green to areas that touch the ground to represent different mosses and algae attaching itself to my buildings. Next I put in a dock, which honestly I wish I had made a bit taller, but that's okay. I glued it in place and then to fill in the gap I mixed in some brown paint with some spackle and then filled the gap to build up a path area to resemble a muddy walkway. Next, I added some dried plant life and then went in with some static grass. This really added some great colors to the build, and I always love this stuff. Now, recycling is always a good thing, and it's no stranger to tabletop crafts. So here, I took some flowers that I had made for a previous build that I'm no longer using and gave them a new home. Now it's time for the most dreaded part of any project that you've dedicated a lot of time to, and that's the resin pour. I used some scrap packaging to create dams, and the first one by the building would be where the water wheel will go. I needed this not to have resin in it so that the wheel could spin, as I wanted it to appear like it was going into the water. To attach the packaging to the foam, I just used hot glue to place it and then reinforce with some UV resin. I did not want the possibility of any leaks. Next. During a Discord hangout, I did the resin pour, and I added some alfalfa green and real brown in with the Envirotex light to give a nicely polluted watercolor, reminiscent of my hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. I tend to do my resin pours with an audience because it is so nerve-wracking and I need the support. Once it cured, I decided I wanted it even darker, so I applied a thin layer of darker water, and that did the trick. Now, about a day later, I went in with some Woodland Scenics water effects and applied some water texture. This, for me, is the part that really ties in and sells that look of water. I also built up rapid areas where the water reel would be interacting with the water uh, using some cotton swabs and UV resin. It was around this time that I got a visit from Amazon, and the motor for my water reel was delivered, and it it was a perfect fit with the water wheel STL that I created. That is a wonderful feeling, let me tell you. So I wired it up and mounted it onto some scrap foam in its new home and it was ready to go. And the wheel was attached to the motor using some super glue. When that was good and settled, I glued down the ground floor of the piece. Now, I'm no stranger to wiring lights, but let me tell you, Terrain Tronics was having a sale and I picked up his Conway Castle board, which allowed me to change the brightness of four LEDs in tandem, and it was ready to go. It's super simple, and it's a really cool addition you can add to a project. Next, I applied some thin pieces of foam for the roof and added my dormer pieces that I also created. The last step in the construction phase was using my Shifting Land shingle jig and applying the shingles. And using black as a base color and then blue and gray mixed together, I dry brushed the shingles and hit it with a dove gray at the end and it was beautiful. 
The final piece was just adding in some woodland scenic flock and the project's done. I really love this step also. Anytime I'm adding green to a project, it's it just brings it to life and that's my favorite part. And here it is in its raw, unedited glory. This is the project. Now I didn't really explain it in the build process, but I did put the water wheel and the lights on two separate switches. So you could run the water wheel by itself or have the lights come on without the water wheel on, vice versa, just to add to that playability. But now I'm gonna be quiet and let you enjoy the shots. So before you go, I just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that sub button. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.